What do I always say? You need to know your numbers, right? So this person is, is no stranger to knowing their numbers. This is a, a, a client that has, has been working with me since before COVID is when they found me. They didn't become a client, I think, till mid-2020. It's when we actually started working together one-to-one. -one. So no stranger to getting your numbers, right? Got to know your numbers first. That's, you know, before we put a whole strategy together, before we follow a philosophy or a concept, whether it's debt snowball, velocity banking, infinite banking, cash flow index, debt avalanche, whatever the strategy is, will not matter until we get the numbers in line first. In order to get the numbers in line, I don't know, maybe we have to overcome some emotional things, okay? I'm not the best one to, to deal in that category. I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm just going to let you know what to do. And we're not going to have a conversation or we're not going to be able to go to the next step until I have the numbers. I can't tell you how many times I've had calls with people came to the call without their numbers. And it ended up being a, a conversation. Oh, how are you doing? Great. Here's what I'm working on, Denzel. My wife just did this and uh, I just invested in, in this with Alex, the 16 grand over here. And I got an issue. I got to buy a new car because the transmission blew out. So I got that going on. And I mean, they're going like this. They're going like this, like this, like this, all around. Ring around the rosy, right? All day long, ring around the rosy. I'm over here in the center. I'm like looking at you, run around the question, the main question, uh, uh, you know, as soon as they get, get done talking. So do you have your numbers? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they? Okay, I, um, so I'm, I got this coming in and then because wife and because it might take 30, 45 minutes, a whole hour before I can extract that information. So I will be as patient as possible as I can be. And I'm going to try and give it to you as straight as I can. This is critical. Got to know the numbers, right? So four major numbers on the left hand side, right? When it comes to their debt tool, their line of credit. Uh, when we first started work to get, working together around 2020, 2021, they obtained a secured personal revolving line of credit for 25000 at 4% with a bank called Public Service Credit Union. Public Service Credit Union was, was the bank. So they were able to, they gave twenty five grand. the bank gave them twenty five grand. they have an interest rate of 4%. As of 2023, that's a phenomenal rate to have. Okay. Prime is at 8% right now. So double that number. As you can see, they have a home equity line of credit, which is the second debt tool, which they acquired. This is a second lien home equity line of credit revolving for $60,000. I believe at the same bank, public service credit union, I think 10.5% is the current rate. They did not start at 10.5. They were below 8%, I think above six when they first got it, which I think was around 2022. It's when they first got the, the HELOC. So here's the, the history of me working with this particular client on the board. Like I mentioned, they started in 2020. That's how much they were generating income. Their cash flow was $100 to $200 when I first met them. We managed to increase it, you know, over a year to 1300 bucks. And then it kind of stagnated, stood the same all through 2022 and then in 2023 we went down so you might be thinking to yourself oh what happened there what's going on all right from a from a coach's perspective okay there's only so much i can do right over the phone and through the videos and through zoom meetings and case studies like this there's only so much i can do at the end of the day the client is in control of their finances i am not I'm not a money manager. I'm not, and even if I was, I'm only managing a portion of their funds. You as the client, you've got to take full accountability of the information that you're feeding yourself, the philosophies you're buying into, the, the, the mindset, the attitudes, all that. You got to really hold yourself accountable for the goals that you initially set out for yourself. But also understand, even myself, we're all going to, you can call it a failure, or a mistake or a setback, whatever you want to call it, life's going to happen. And the key thing is for you to stick to your morals and principles. Even when life happens, there's a setback, there's a failure, there's a, a delay. Like I said, whatever you want to name that, when things don't go according to plan, according to the numbers that Denzel wrote on the, on the board and whatnot, according to the timeline, we, we, we can't go back 
to what to how you were operating before you met me before you started watching my content and other people's content got to remain in that base that principle who we are right uh, uh the foundations that we're trying to build that base can't sacrifice it for lack of a, a discipline or lack of knowledge yet come back come back okay shoot life's coming at us what do we do don't violate principles don't violate the laws that you've established because because you can't violate a law the law violates you can't violate a principle the principle violates you when you break it guess what there's a consequence so here's an example right not all of my case studies are uh, lovely you know where i'm like look how amazing you know so every now and then i show negative case studies negative cash flow i'll show a case study like this where i'm like look you know we started out good and then had some setbacks and then we picked it up and now we got another setback and it's going to take some time for this so-called base foundation to really be built it might take a couple years for certain people as a coach i need to remain patient diligent keep praying do everything in my power to kind of reel you back in you may or may not be dealing with this situation but 2023 i'm telling you is another warning i said this in the last gathering on, on our last live stream together people are going to get exposed it might be the person on this board right here right it may not if we do certain moves but people are going to get exposed in the next 12 months that are over leveraging that are uh, uh, borrowing tons of, of of cheap debt and not realizing that the interest rates have been creeping up on those zero percent debts or or low interest or fixed rate debts or variable debts with a fixed rate that's about to expire you don't realize the jump of what a two percent increase would do a three percent increase what what that can do to your monthly payments so get ready okay this is an example of hey if you feel like you're like this person here on the board get ready you're gonna want to pivot you're gonna make some critical moves to pivot so again coming back to numbers four major numbers here are our two debt tools we initially were using the personal line of credit at four percent then they switched to the heloc because it was bigger credit line and we were roughly at the same borrowing cost similar not not quite the same it was a couple points higher for their situation it made sense for them to jump to the higher line because they wanted to do some investing while paying off debt so this is what this is what kind of happened it's when when client met me right they met dr benzel their initial goal was become debt free that was the initial goal i want to become debt free plus invest in real estate so ideally in in their mind and in our strategy the, the goal was become debt free regardless of all this other stuff and all this other content creators we initially set out a goal now we then violated that and decided to jump a couple steps and invest now to defend my client a little bit they were doing it they were knocking down debt they were doing great there were you know things were according to plan for you know someone with five kids a wife and family and all that they were you know they was doing their thing they were on point a little bit it was doing good and then something happens and this is always the case is there's there's a line of communication that is initially established with denzel their financial coach their cons consultant their strategist their mentor their accountability partner there's that initial connection that is established and it's firm and it's consistent all of a sudden because you're adults remember i'm the kid here you're you guys you're the adults in your 40s and 50s making decisions because you're a grown woman you're a grown man so i totally get it it can be a little a little weird to surrender your authority to a child that you basically could call son <laughs> right because you might have a son around my age totally get it so what happens is the line of connection will break for a period of time it always happens right for situations like this not every client of course right my most successful clients don't break communication that is a consistent thing that i have observed and seen my most successful clients do not break content contact they don't break contact they will either keep me informed via email they might they might spread out the consistency of communication maybe instead of initially they were calling me every other month or every month and then it went to like every quarter and then it went to two times a year three times a year and then maybe one or two times a year right but they still kept in contact in contact with me all the way through they're the most successful clients for the people that break content contact right? i keep saying content 
the people that break contact with me will experience other voices coming at them, right? Other influences attacking your brain, whether positive or negative. So something, something had to have happened where the client felt they got to a point, they had a really good rhythm going on with velocity banking. They got two debt tools. Now they got more credit. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 right? They're like, oh yeah, things are going, things are going. Yeah, boom, chunking, velocity banking. I know how this feels. Like you just start moving, right? You start, things start going fast, you know? Wife is saying things to you she wasn't saying 10, 20 years ago, right? Now she's saying it again and then vice versa. Husband's talking to wife in a different way. You guys are just vibing, you know, something reignited. I don't know. Things are happening. Start breaking communication. Look what happens. They decided to invest first rule they broke they violated a principle of leverage with the sixty thousand dollar heloc and the twenty five thousand dollar debt tool they leveraged as of today 2023 they owe twenty four thousand forty seven dollars and eighty six cents on their secured personal line of credit on their heloc they owe fifty eight thousand four twenty five thirty one i would say you're over leveraged at this point way past my 66 percent rule agreed everyone in here pretty sure you put in the comments agreed we're over leveraged not pretty okay so naturally what happens the the side effect the symptom of over leveraging is you will immediately have an impact on cash flow the moment your cash flow starts to go down stress levels increase all of a sudden the same pretty things wife was saying now she's not saying it no more vice versa husband's not saying those pretty things he was saying to wife so now there's stress now there's tension in the bed we don't want that there's tension in the household kids are yelling there's arguments now we're feeding into our impulses that we were practicing before we met denzel which was wasting wasting money waste management right we forgot that principle that's another symptom so notice how there's a, this trickle effect you violate one law and you get three diseases that come in that you initially eliminated or or repelled for a period of time. So we got violated from our cash flow because we broke the rule of leveraging, right? So we broke that rule. Now we're seeing it in our cash flow. Stress levels are are higher because now we're like, <gasps> and then they come back to me on a phone call like this, all down. Yeah, this is what happened. I can just I can like feel it through the phone, even though I don't see them. It's like I'm. This is what I'm imagining. I'm just my shoulders are down wife's in the other room you know she's like go talk to him right go talk to him see what the heck he wants to you know how is he gonna get us out of this problem and now i have to be a magician right now i gotta do magic with the numbers so here's my magic right and by the way complete joke there there's no magic here it's just numbers okay so now we have to mitigate fix the problem right so just painted you that full picture here what's going on we're in an over leveraged position how are we going to use velocity banking to put us back into a healthy position to move forward? This is what I wanted. A little racer. All right. Painted the picture. Now let's go to work. Let's go to work. We got nearly maxed out line of credit, PLOC, nearly maxed out HELOC. Currently, they were doing velocity banking on their HELOC, right? And then they stopped. So they, so it's come to a full stop because they got nearly maxed out. So you, it's really hard to do velocity banking when you're nearly maxed out on the line. You have to create space so that you don't get in a situation where you're like dumping your paycheck in, but then you got to take more out. And then all of a sudden the, the money's gone. It's like not there, right? So we need to create that space. That's our first issue, first problem. We need to create space. But now the question is, which debt tool do I use, okay? Do I use the HELOC? At 10.5%, when they initially got it, it wasn't at 10.5, it was below eight. So it's jumped. Their PLOC has remained at 4%. One of the things that I do like about rev uh, unsecured and secured personal revolving lines of credits is they tend to maintain the interest rate. It doesn't fluctuate as quickly as a HELOC does, especially if the HELOC is not fixed or fixed for a period of time. What I've noticed is with personal lines of credit, my clients that obtained them in 2019, 2020, 2021, their, uh, their rates have roughly either been the same or maybe only gone up one or two points, but not a huge jump. I don't know what forever, whatever reason that is. Um, 
because a PLOC is a variable line of credit, it's a variable rate. So it does change. But for whatever reason, um, this is across many banks for people that have personal lines of credit. And you can go ahead and testify and comment as well. If you do have a PLOC, your rate really hasn't changed dramatically like people's HELOCs have or credit cards for that matter. So this client, their rate is still the same 4%, right? And I verified that with them. So when I'm in a bind like this, and I want to implement velocity banking, I need to put my money where it's going to, to provide the most strength for me. What I mean by that is where can I park my income where majority of that income will show up in principle for me to be able to use again. You're not going to experience that at 10.5% on $58,000 owed. You're just not, especially with low cash flow, 538. It's going to be difficult. So my recommendation was that they use their PLOC at 4%. By doing velocity banking, we can bring four and cut it in half, less than two in net costs. So if we run the math, 24,000 times 4%, you're gonna get 961.91. That's the total amount of interest in a year. You divide that by 365, we're paying about $2.63 a day, right? Monthly payment interest only is 80 bucks. Now, with every PLOC I've ever seen, I've, I've never seen interest only payments on personal lines of credit. I've never really seen that only with HELOCs. You get that option with interest only payments could be wrong, but for majority of PLOCs, it's usually principal and interest payment required. Usually 1.5 or, or say 2% of the balance is what they usually always charge. So in this case, their actual payment is about 480 bucks. I believe based on the 24,000 oh, so if I so if I go 24,047.86 times 2%, that's roughly their monthly payment about 480 bucks, okay? Is what they're currently paying. All right. So we're only looking at about $80 in interest that we can recapture on that 480, but majority of the 480 is already principal, hence the low rate. So we're not getting, you know, beat up. So we got the 480 plus the 538.08 of Velocity Banking. And in this particular case, we have a tax refund coming in in the next 30, 60 days. We're in May of 2023, so it's already been filed and everything. We should probably see it in May, June the latest, right? So the best use of that money, 16K, is to dump it right into our PLOC, create a lot of space for us to make a chunk towards some debts to recapture cash flow. So the goal now, is coming back to paying off debt. And I asked them, are you sure? You told me that in 2020, it's 2023. We started, when I met them, we started at 253,286.39 owed. It's 2023, we now owe 273,911.34. The goal was to pay off debt. You did that during 2020, 2021, 2022, we were knocking it down. Now to their defense, they invested in real estate. So if, if you really look at it, um, in terms of the amount of debt they eliminated, 273, 911, 34, and minus the investment property that they acquired, which the mortgage now, right, not including the down payment, because that would have been a higher number. So now it's at 104, 289. So minus 104, 289. That brings it down to 169, 622, 34. And then the HELOC, majority of that 58K was used for the down payment of the investment property, right? So I'll say minus 40. So had they not done that, we would have been from 273, we probably would have been around maybe 140, 150K owed, maybe even less because their cash flow would have been higher had we kept going the debt elimination route. And, and granted, if we didn't acquire any new debts, that's another thing, they acquired new debts, right? You can tell just by some of the balances here, like that's, you know, some new debts there credit card debts, a loan, car note, All right, we, we actually eliminated stuff, but then put them right back on. So that's a habit. That's a, that's, that's a cultural thing that prior to meeting Denzel, that they had been operating in for however many years they've been alive or working for, right? So give yourself grace, patience, talk to Holy Spirit, talk to the father and, you know, get a confidant, someone you trust to really work through this because you, you might slip back to these old habits it might happen here and there uh don't beat yourself up and just give up right if if you invested in coaching right and this is a this is a call out 
to people who are working with me for free and they're not using me for free. And then people who are paying me to work with me, but you're not using me. So basically you're, you, you have resources in the world. You have access to things in the world, but you're not using it because of whatever emotional stuff is building up inside of you that you don't want to talk about or deal with. Totally get it. I get it. That's why I'm a numbers guy. That's, I, I remove the emotion. It's like boom, 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 boom. Dude, let's do the steps, right? Let's get past all that. But for some, that doesn't work. Sometimes you have to sit down and talk about your feelings, right? It works, okay? So coming back, we're gonna do velocity banking on this P-lock. We're going to reroute all funds to the personal line of credit. In addition to them over leveraging themselves over this period of time, they also were abusing another rule that we have as it relates to spending, uh, running bills through a credit card and paying it off in full or paying the statement balance in full to avoid interest. When you, the way you violate this rule is by running your bills through a credit card and then only paying a portion of it on the due date and now you're getting hit with interest. You're better off not using the credit card at all because you just added to your cost of living by however much interest you just paid on that 29% credit card. Follow me? So if you ran $4,000 of bills worth through a credit card and maybe you got 30, 40 bucks, back in cashback rewards, but you didn't pay the full balance off of the 4K, and now you just got charged $58 in interest, you didn't do anything, you just went backwards. Now imagine that compounding month over month over month over month over month doing that, because in your mind, you're in the under the spell or illusion or whatever, because you're not running your numbers. So you're running bills through a credit card, and you're only paying a portion, only paying a portion, only paying a portion, then you're like, well, I'm getting cashback rewards and, doo -doo -doo and points. You're, you're hurting yourself. So what I like to do with my clients when I see this happen and they express what's going on and it shows in the numbers, I say, look, we have to now remove that tool from you, right? Because you're using this hammer and you're like, you're, you're hammering your, your fingers instead of the nail, right? You're messing yourself up. You're hurting yourself. So I need to take this tool from you and we're going to put it over here, right? Because you're hurting yourself. I don't want you to hurt yourself. That's not good. So we don't want to do that. So now here's what happens. I'm gonna remove the credit card. I say, look, here on out, you are to not run bills through any one of these credit cards that you have because there's a running balance on it. You now owe money and you're paying interest. So to mitigate that loss, right, to recover from that rule being broken, we're gonna stop using that tool. We're just going to pay the monthly minimum payment on every other debt. And we're gonna reroute all cash flow to the line of credit to recover. Here's what, what will happen. When they get that lump sum, 16 grand goes right into the line. So you minus that from the 24. Income, here's what I wrote, 6,650 plus 215, okay? I mentioned earlier that they're generating a total of 7,950. They have rental income of roughly $1,300. Of the $1,300, $1,085 is rental cost. That's in a business account. So all we're gonna do is take the cash flow from the business move it over to personal and then put the cash flow in the P lock and have it sit there. If anything comes up on the on the rental, then we can always pull the money back out, drive it back into the business account and then the business account pays for whatever costs, right? It's a pass through, so that's legal. We can do that, it's not an issue. So what's actually going into the line is not the full 79.50, it's just the 6,650 plus the 215, right? Which means, you minus 1085 from total expenses. This is what's actually coming out of the line, 6,326.92. So at the end of May, roughly, the balance is either going to be 23,509.78, somewhere around that number, or around 7,509.78. This number reflects the 16K going in. This number reflects not receiving the 16K in May, and maybe it comes in June, right? Whether I get it in May or June, right after receiving the, the lump sum, dump it into the line to manipulate that, that rate. And then we're gonna start chunking to recover quite a bit of cash flow in a short period of time, put us in a, in a better, healthier permit position. And we're not going to invest anymore. We don't have the capital. We don't have the leverage. Even if we did get access to more capital, we shouldn't do it. Even if it's, a, even if it's an amazing guaranteed, you know, all the pitch, all the attraction, make money fast, flip money fast. I get it. It wouldn't be wise. 
because we haven't secured the base, right? Even if they start making more money, they're still slipping back into old habits. Their cost of living is just going to go up and they're going to be even more debt and more stress. And it's like, you know, what am I here for as a, as a coach? Right. Got to work through their work, through those problems. Right. Want to help them get out the mess, stay out the mess. So here is a breakdown of how we're going to leverage the 16 K once it goes in there and how much of the line we will use. So when it goes down to 7,509.78, we go back to our rule of leverage. 25,000 times what? Two thirds is 16,500. So from 16,5 minus 7,509.78, we would use only $8,990.22, right? To leverage 8,990.22. What's the best way to use those funds? And I'm gonna give uh, a couple different examples of what we could do, right? Here are the debts right here that we're looking at. He's got other ones, but these other debts are on 0%. And then the two big debts is the mortgage. So majority of that is primary mortgage debt, the investment property, and then that HELOC right here. So HELOC, investment property, and then we also have a primary mortgage. We're gonna leave those three alone. Those are the biggest debts. And we have some other debts at 0%. We're gonna ignore those. Here are our most pressing debts that are sucking the most amount of cash flow from our economy. So I pretty much went in order from least to greatest, you can run cash flow index where you take the balance, divide by the monthly payment, you'll get a number. Uh, just looking at the interest rates, we can clearly see that moving 9.99, 8.75, 15.99 to 4%, 4% becomes less than two. That's a phenomenal deal. Can't beat that in today's market, right? 4% is an extremely low rate. It's hard to find anything at 4% borrowing costs right now. And then to be able to reduce that, and cut that number in half, right? So 8,990.22 minus that credit card, 1091.24, I'm gonna show you how I got to my numbers, minus 2209.31 minus 3,116.90. What's left over would get applied towards the next debt. So if I stay within my leveraging rule of two thirds, I can only use whatever's available. So from whatever's owed, to the time we chunk up to 16.5 is what we'll use. With that conservative chunk here, we will be able to pay off three debts. The first three, gone. 130, 336, 136. 15.99, 8.75, 9.99 gets rerouted to four. That's a phenomenal move right there. No need to argue the math that that's clearly a savings, right? Cash flow gain from that, from those three, would be $603.15. The remaining, 2,572.77 would go towards the vehicle, the car, and more of that 287 is going to go towards principal, right? So our balance would be at 16.5, and I would have roughly $8,500 of space. Emergency, what ifs, da da da. If they over leverage a little bit, the most that I would go would be this number, 20,491.61. Where'd you get that number, Denzel? By adding the vehicle to get the 287, right? So I'm either going to cash flow anywhere between 60315 or a total of 89091 from elim eliminating these four debts, sticking them into the line of credit. I now have 89538 and then the monthly payment itself of 480 driving that line of credit down, right? So if we did conservative 165, then all we would do is velocity banking for a couple of months just enough room to be able to throw the rest of the remaining balance into the line. So that might only take two, three months to create some more space, right? Now that they have a guaranteed cash flow increase. So it's already gonna be two or three more months, then the car gets paid off. So maybe say this is June, July, say by August, right? Then we eliminate the car, right? Car paid maybe by August 23. If we get the refund by May or June, then by June, you went a little more aggressive, then we could pay off all four. You get the 890, do velocity banking, bring the line of credit down close to zero so that we can make our next chunk, right? Now, what's gonna happen is before we make that second chunk, we're gonna do micro chunking a little bit, okay? Micro chunking will apply to the 0% debts that the client has, right? Because outside 
of these four debts, like I mentioned, we have that big HELOC right here, the investment property and the primary mortgage. The primary mortgage and the investment property off the table, we're not even looking at that yet. So the next debt that we would attack would be the HELOC, right? That's at 10.5%. There's a lot of cash flow to recover there just from the interest alone. A lot of cash flow to recover there. But before we get there, we have some other 0% debts that we need to eliminate, right? And I think they have two to three credit cards. So that'll give us a couple hundred more dollars. That's just going to take a couple months that these things are expiring this year and leading up to the beginning of next year. So we're focusing on bringing the line to zero and then we're probably going to add a little thousand here, probably 1500 here, 2000 here on the credit cards that are expiring, which is pushing them into the line as we're paying the line down. So it's going to go up, down, up, down, up, down by 2024 or sooner, 2024 or sooner. Now we would start chunking again in larger amounts We start chunking at the HELOC. The HELOC was once a velocity banking tool that was like an asset for us. It has now become a liability, right? Let me express what that liability looks like. 58,425, 31 times 10.5%. Look what 4% on 24 is only 961 in a year. On 58 grand, so almost double the number, a little more than double, the cost is $6,134.65. Divide that by 12, his monthly payment is 51122 interest only. So that's cash flow to be recovered. So in his HELOC, it's interest only could add additional principal, but at the at current pace, before we do all this, currently he's only 538.08. So that money is going to die, right? When he dumps it into here, it's getting eaten up at 10.5, which is why we're not going to use that tool. We're going to use the 4% because my 538 is going to go to work better over there than in here. So what will happen is once we bring the line of credit close to zero, we can either wait to bring the line of credit all the way to zero and then do our chunk of 16.5 and then go to work on the HELOC, right? And then do chunks of either 16.5 um, or we can do like 10, 10K chunks, right? We'll just measure it out according to where his cash flow would be. So by 2024, our cash flow should be the 890.91 plus the 538. 08 plus the 480. So we should have a net of just under 2000 bucks staying in the line of credit, knocking that down. Once they've developed that rhythm, because we paid off all his credit cards in 2023, then I say, look, let's start to implement the credit card yet again. This time, let's only use it on subscriptions and monthly automatic bills, not random unexpected bills, not fluctuating bills like food and gas, let's just say. Just develop that discipline again. Let's just only put, you know, your your internet, cable bill, phone bill, subscriptions, you know, anything that just recurs on a monthly. Let's slide those back into the line. Let's get in the habit of paying the statement balance, setting up auto pay from the checking account, the P-Lock. You move money out of the P-Lock into the checking, automatically pays that credit card in full. Let's get in the rhythm of that so we can start uh, receiving those rewards, those cashback rewards again, and actually offset our costs even in, a, in a better way, right? So 2024, we're looking at under 2K in cash flow per month. And by 2024, the debt will still be the same. That's the unfortunate thing because no money is going towards principal, right? It's getting eaten up. Interest only payments at 10.5%. And if rates go up, then his payment goes up, right? So that that's why we need to get this done as quickly as possible. As long as along with all the other credit card debts, I'm not even adding the cash flow here. There's about another 100 to 250 bucks in cash flow by eliminating two to three other credit cards that are on 0%. So that puts us above 2K plus in cash flow per month. And he also expressed um, working more hours. Wife, I think, is getting in a position where she's going to be able to work some more hours. So we're looking at increasing income uh, with the investment property that he has. It wasn't going according to plan, which is kind of like what made a whole mess out of this because they invested, didn't go according to plan. So they're only generating like $1,300 a month when really they have the potential to be doing like 2000 maybe 2500 because they're renting a property with multiple 
uh, tenants on the same property and just kind of renting rooms out. So they could have been generating more, but that has not been the case. So if that goes better, then obviously their income goes higher and then obviously more cash flow, then this just kind of speeds it up. So we're looking forward to that maybe eventually working itself out and that getting better. So I'm, I'm hopeful in that regard. And then 2024, our sole focus, if we continue to not invest, right? Just mitigate, right? Recover, reduce our cost of borrowing. I believe we can get that HELOC balance more than 50% of it, we can get it in the line of credit at 4%. So we're moving 10.5 simple interest to 4% simple interest. 4% becomes less than two in net cost of borrowing. Not bad. And then we'll get that $500 back. So by the end of 2024, going into 2025, HELOC should be gone, should be done, right? Back to a zero balance. And then we can keep using the secured PLOC at 4%, right? Or we could then discuss all right, like every year when I talk to my clients, I usually will ask them, okay, is debt elimination still the goal? Do you still want to pay off debt? I ask that I need to hear that verbal yes, yes, you know, like, all right, so let's not buy Bitcoin, right? Let's not buy these stocks over here. Let's not get in this real estate syndication over here. Let's keep paying off the debt. So by the end of 2024, going into 2025, we eliminated all his consumer debts, credit cards, loans, car loans, the HELOC is gone. And let's say the PLOC is at zero. And the only debt I have left are two properties, an investment property and his primary. So he can either say, all right, I want to attack the primary. We have the perfect tool to do that. Secure personal line of credit, 4%. His mortgage is probably around that same rate, if not a little higher, because it was acquired back in 2020, I believe. So the rate is, is around that 4%, but understand it's amortized. So there's a win by using that PLOC to pay off his mortgage and get guaranteed cash flow and interest savings. So that's that's a guarantee. We could keep going that route, right? But I leave it up to the client. They might say, you know what, Denzel, I, I'm good now. I won't mess up. I'll stick to my rules. I'll only borrow 66%. And here's, here's the thing. Don't you try to trick my rule or, or finesse and say 60K plus 25K and then times those two by 66%. Don't do that. Oh no, it's of one tool you're leveraging. You know, be like, okay, okay, you know, you have five debt tools and you want to leverage 66% of all the debt tools. There goes all your cash flow. So don't, don't try to trick the numbers. The numbers are going to trick you back, right? And you're going to look like you got tricked, not cute. So whatever they decide to do come 2025 or sooner, if they decide to invest again and acquire another property, all right, do you. But I, I gave you the solution. You, you know how to come back from loss. You know how to recover. You've got your base. We just, at this point, if they go through this whole thing, we've officially recovered and rebuilt, reestablished our base, our rules and principles. We're disciplined. Hopefully they do not repeat the same mistakes in 2025. Hopefully that's not the case. I'm not hoping they do one or the other thing. I'm hoping they make better financial decisions as they continue to grow in, in age and wisdom and in their finances. If they do decide to invest, I would simply have them do things that they didn't do on their first investment. Like, hey, what happens if you invest in this piece of property and you don't find a renter for six months or you don't or it doesn't produce positive cash flow for the first six to nine months? Do you have the cash flow to cover that mortgage payment and still produce over a thousand plus in cash flow per month, right? A healthy cash flow number. If that's a no, you probably shouldn't do it, right? Like you want to be more strict on yourself because you experienced a two year delay, right? From 2023 to 2025, we're recovering when we could have avoided this altogether. So that cost me two years of my life to recover, right? That's not, that, that's, that's a lot of time, right? We want to do that. So that is it for the case study here. Put it back on the screen. Check out everything. Hope you took notes.